What's up everybody, a spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Warframe Orbiter and Lizette? Lizette? I'm not sure how that's supposed to be said. Um, which is actually a really cool looking ship to me. Very, very different, and I'm not really sure why no one's really attempted it yet before. Um, now, there are a couple of things to note, one of which being um, that I believe the interior of the ship is a little bit on the um, ad-libbed side, that the interior, I don't think you see as much of the size of the ship as the exterior would have you believe, so it's one of those where um, the builder tried to recreate the interior as accurately as possible but then there was a lot of extra room so they basically just kind of kept the theme going and added more stuff um i can't i can't say that i've seen the exterior of this ship often enough to really recognize it as like oh yeah it's really accurate but uh it looked pretty close to the screenshots that i was seeing and it has it has just a cool design that's part of why i liked it is even if it's not 100 percent accurate or something it's still just really different uh, Warframe has a lot of unique art style stuff to it, so um, it's definitely not your typical ship kind of thing and ship design. I do like the thruster setup back here. This is pretty cool. Um, this is a world file which is also heavily modded, so bear that in mind. Uh, it, the, the workshop file did not actually even list the um, all the different mods because the builder said it would have taken too long so they just made it a world so if you wanted to paste this into your own it would require a bit of tinkering on your part um so this looks like as good a door as any let's go ahead and uh get in here um there is also a note in the files or in the workshop file description about uh air tightness and that it's not really airtight these are some cool doors though I've been I haven't been doing a lot of modding lately so that's pretty awesome um, but yeah there's a there's something about when the the lies it I, I forget how it's supposed to be said uh, but when it's docked it doesn't um, it, there was some kind of error or issue with the with the air ceiling essentially so they basically turned off the air tightness in uh in this world okay so this looks more like a maintenance area back here which is very huge mind you the gyroscopes alone are kind of crazy um i don't think this is too framey oh yeah i guess it is i just checked my obs overlay type thing and yeah it's it's got me down to 30 um, so this is a really big ship, and with all the mods and stuff, it's kind of going to be a bit frame-intensive depending on your system. So bear that in mind. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm holding around 30, but I usually try and keep it around 60, so it's not too bad because 30 isn't terrible, but um, it's definitely still playable for at least for my system anyway that's that's one of those performance wise is always going to vary depending on your system your hardware all that kind of stuff so um but if you don't mind playing it around 30 and your system can handle it uh yeah it's it's not bad uh but the overall decor is pretty cool though again it's tough to tell because some of this was added i don't think you'll see any of that kind of stuff in the in the ship in Warframe itself, so you have to kind of take some of it with a grain of salt. We're just going to go ahead and hop up here. This looks a bit more... Ooh, that's kind of cool. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be other than cool looking. I've only played Warframe a little bit. Um, it's fun, I like it, but it, can, it tends to be a little repetitive, so I do it kind of in smaller doses to me. Uh, oh, we got a captain's quarters. We have an infirmary. And this elevator system back here that we just saw is probably going to tie into that lower decks uh, sign that we saw at the top, I imagine. Captain's... Ooh. Ooh. This is cool. I'm pretty sure this is the actual Lizette. I'm just going to call it that because it sounds better. 
I'll be I'll be lucky if it actually is how it's supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> um, that's pretty neat though that it's done through a sensor, so you can open the door and it just comes down. Now I will say, what if I want to get? What if I want to get in here? Ah, okay. So we have kind of the jump drive small reactor. Well, not really small reactor, but a small grid reactor. And then let's get this back down. I don't know that I'll be flying this one. I might, I'm not sure. But yeah, now this I recognize. This I definitely recognize. Okay, so now I have, now I know where I'm at in the ship. And this is pretty cool. I actually really like this, this embedded in the bottom with glass under it kind of thing. I mean, glass above it. That's pretty cool. Now there's a hatch there. I don't know why. Where do you go? Oh, this is for the drop-off point. Or the drop-off part of the ship, which is pretty cool. That is pretty neat. We'll turn that off for now so we don't accidentally do anything. Um, I have always found that to be one of the most unique dropship things, that the dropship is horizontal, and you the ship basically flies in, opens up, and lets the tenno just drop down. But yeah, this would be your main bridge. Now, I have to admit, I did not realize that the main bridge section is what detaches from the orbiter. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'm starting to get my bearings here. So this would be... You should come over here. Ah, okay. So this would be one of the crafting stations. This would be two. And then you would have your character customization area. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'm now I'm in a, a place I recognize. Okay. And so that's why the jump drive's down here. Got it. Now that says bridge. And I think in the main game is where this is ad-libbed, I think, because I don't think you can actually go back in here. Now, I grant you, I've never played the game for any length of period in terms of getting all upgraded and max level and end game, so I don't know if maybe you can add on to your ship in the game later, but I'm assuming a lot of this stuff is kind of um, take the same idea, but then just kind of roll with it and make up stuff, I think. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Now, we came from this area, I thought, but I didn't see a bridge back here. Oh, I guess this is supposed to be the bridge. Hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, again, because I believe in the main game you're actually flying from the, uh, from the... Lizette up there. But the the part that I was going to say that I didn't recognize, now I'm guessing this takes us up to the top where we were. I love this elevator mod, by the way. I ran into a couple of ships that use this. I don't think I've ever actually showcased one of them. Uh, but I really do like this mod. It's really, really cool. I'd like to figure out some kind of solution for something similar in vanilla. I think that would be neat. So here's the bottom area. Okay, this is like the observation area. And then we have... Ooh! Y'all know how much I love me some glass floors and stuff. I will say I do like the art style for Warframe. Um, I've always had trouble kind of getting into the game and really getting hooked on it, but I've always loved the art style. Art style is really cool. It's, it's very sleek and sci-fi-y. And it's still really cool. Um, ooh, very nice. I was, I'm surprised with all the other stuff there isn't some kind of projector thing there. Oh, and then this leads outside? Well, okay. I guess if you really are in a hurry to have a meeting, you can just come from outside in space and be like, Okay, sorry I'm late, guys. <laughs> Traffic was terrible out there. Um, what goes... Ooh, okay. Cryo storage. Alright, more cryo chambers. Um, but yeah, I've, I've played the game enough to kind of know the, the ship layout of the basic part up top. Um, but what I didn't know was that the Lizette part was actually supposed to be the ship that you're flying in. Like I said, maybe I never got far enough to where you get an orbiter or something, or... I'm not sure. I really don't know. Uh, but I always thought that the uh, 
Lizette and the dropship were two different things, kind of thing. So that's kind of a cool way to do it. I never realized that. Ooh, we have more floors. Holy crap. All right. Nothing going that way. This is supposed to be for a hangar? Ooh, this is pretty cool. Some more... Is this using the full slope? No, it's not. Interesting. That's pretty cool. That gives me ideas. Wow. Okay, it even has a hangar. Holy crap, man. Wow. Hangar doors. Hangar doors. Side doors. Which ones are the side doors? Okay, that's the sides over there. I'm guessing the hangers are these back here? No? I don't see any hangar doors. Interesting. We'll have to go uh, investigate. I'm gonna hit that again just to make sure. Alright. Okay, I don't see... I'm really surprised I made that jump, actually. I don't see any hangar doors. Unless it's those, but then I don't know why they weren't moving. And then... Ooh, wow, we even have little dropship things. That's pretty crazy. This ship is huge. Alright, are you guys... Those must be the hangar doors, possibly. Because they look like they're not on the same grid. Hello. Hello. Is it that far down? Oh, it's off. And I can't turn it on for some reason. Alright. Well, jetpack it. Screw you. Really? Now, that it really was not taking that long. Holy crap. Alright, yeah. Yeah, these... These must be the hangar doors. I don't know why they weren't opening, but whatever. And then I'm guessing these down here lead to the first floor of that other elevator we were using. Oh, wow. This ship just keeps going! Holy crap! There's always more! Ooh! Ooh! Very nice observation room. Me like. Me like. I like it. I don't know what it is. I think it's just because space is so... Uh, so eye-catching. And it's really, really cool looking. That I've always just loved glassy ships. I think the other reason is because it's very difficult to do glass on a ship. Like even in real life, if you try to make glass on a submarine or something, the pressure can cause all kinds of problems, and that's why Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and stuff was a cool idea. Probably aged myself a lot by just knowing what that is, but whatever. It was a cool movie show back in the day. Um, so yeah, it just kind of carried over, like even in, in Star Trek and all those, I always loved the ships with these big old glass windows that let you see stuff. It's really cool. Oh, I actually want to go down to two. Alright. Yeah, so this part does feel familiar. I can't sp speak to the rest of it, but this does feel pr uh, pretty familiar. And we'll go ahead and close that off, just in case. And since this is actually like a two-in-one, uh, we'll go ahead and fly the big ship, and then... And this doesn't help either if you wanted to go into your world edit files, or uh, M not MC edit, what's the... SE toolbox and remove the planet, you probably get better frame rates as well. I didn't feel like messing with it and I wasn't getting too bad of a frame rate, so I decided to keep it. Uh, but if you were really wanting to use the ship, that would be my first recommendation to help uh, help with that. So, um, what we're going to do is check all this. We have mag locks, makes sense, docking clamps, jump drives, uh, the drop and extract sequence, not really sure what those are for. Um, I obviously know that they're for the drop and extract thing, but I mean, I don't know why you would need a, a timer block for all of that. But let's see. So, we have dampeners off, maybe because we're flying... 
in this. Maybe I should be flying from the bridge. Huh. Let's actually do that to be safe. I wasn't going to, but I think it would probably be a better idea. So let's go ahead and fly from the bridge. That way we don't have to worry about it, because I will, the dampeners made me question maybe you're not supposed to fly from there. Okay, we don't have any controls here. So I'm either in the wrong seat. Or... Hello? Not main. Come on, where's the... Now this doesn't say not main, so I guess this is. There we go, that's better. <laughs> we were trying to fly with the little fighter. Alright, so... Acceleration is ridiculous, but I think that's in large part to all the modded thrusters and whatnot. Um, movement is surprisingly agile, actually. It's not too bad. I expected the bigger orbiter part to be a little more clunky, but it actually doesn't move too bad. And reverse and stuff isn't too bad either. Wow, okay. So it actually moves pretty good. Um, Alright, so let's go investigate the... Uh, this way. Let's go investigate the set version. I really hope I'm saying that right and not driving people nuts by saying it wrong all this time. Okay, so now let's turn the mag locks off and the docking clamps off. We'll turn our dampeners on and then we'll fly out. Doesn't look like we destroyed anything so that's pretty good. Um, so again, this was kind of more... Uh, what I remember seeing for the ship, or at least the drop ship, but I don't know if maybe I just never got far enough to get one of the orbiters or something. I don't know. But this feels more familiar. Um, the only thing is, this would not have. If you go down here, it doesn't have all of that stuff back there, which you do need as part of the ship from the. I mean, you have it in the game, so obviously. I must have had the orbiter thing. I don't, know. I don't know. So let's try out this extraction thing. We have drop and extract. So let's hit eight. And that opens. And then we would get in here. We turn our jetpack on if we wanted to actually be, you know, accurate. And then you can fly out this way, which is pretty cool. Um, and then there's, I'm guessing, an extract button. Yeah, extract. So then you could click that and it would open it up and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know exactly how it would work in terms of Space Engineers gameplay. I mean, you're obviously not a Tenno. So, you know, there's that. But it is a pretty cool dropship kind of system. I like it. So overall, I approve. And with that, let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, so next up we have the uh, Camel, the Civil Mobile Base. I believe I got that right for once. Um, and this one, uh, the, a couple of these I've actually pulled from uh, a few weeks ago because I, I pulled them, like I subscribed to them and stuff, thinking I would use them at some point. And um, some of the offerings this week I, I just didn't really quite connect with, so I went back through some of my list of what haven't I shown off that I meant to at some point, and so this was one of them, among, and the next one should be one of them as well. Um, and uh, this one really caught my eye because of two things. One, it's another mobile base, which I think is pretty cool, uh, but it's also centralized. Centralized? Centralized. Yeah, we're gonna... Centered. It's centered around the idea of a rotor base suspension, which I don't really know exactly how they pulled off. Uh, but it's pretty neat when you look at the videos and the GIFs and all that kind of stuff on the description of the workshop file, that uh, it has this cool ability to kind of adapt to the terrain, which is pretty unique to me. And it's something that I think a lot of wheel-based uh, bases, vehicles, whatever, um, I think they have a problem with. So it, I think it's kind of one of those steps in the right direction to get a bit more stabilized. 
Um, it's also huge. For like for well not huge but I mean it's it's a big base for it's not just like a tank or something it's a really big um, mobile base there are solar panels here on the back I don't know if they're attached to a rotor that can extend them or not it looks like this is actually part of a landing platform so I guess there's just solar panels on the back to help power it um, so yeah, overall, it's pretty cool, and it has that kind of industrial vibe, too. And then there's this cool doohickey, which looks like a repair crane, um, which I gotta try it. I gotta try it. All right, so what do we have here? We have the advanced rotor projector toggled off, the re uh, advanced rotor projector reverse, and then a welder. But because it's like on... Can I not zoom in any further? That's weird. So we have it on, let's see, there's one piston for height, one for uh, vertical, or I mean horizontal, one for, well, basically it's like uh, Z-axis, Y-axis, X-axis movement, and then it's on a, a couple of rotors for up and down as well. So you can kind of turn, you can move it up and down. Now I don't know what happens. Ooh! If you hit the WASD keys, it ri Oh, that's so awesome! I love this arm! Like, this is enough of a reason for me to show this build. It's got a crane arm. That's so freaking cool! Now what it's for? No idea. Uh, let's hit the projector. Okay, that just rotates it. And that reverses it, but it's not really, like, on. So, I don't really know. I guess it's to project things and then you can swivel around it and build it. Um, but I don't see a way to turn the projector on from here, so that's kind of odd. Uh, is there a control panel I can access? No? Alright, let's try this. Um, projector? I guess you can just input stuff. It doesn't have one set up. It's already on. So that's interesting. But yeah, I love that crane arm. That thing's so cool. Alright, now, one other cool thing I like about this is I love these auto ramp things. That when you get over here, you hear the little sensor click, and then the piston lowers. It's got a cool defense turret for you. And then when you get up here, it raises. Um, left reverse, advanced wheel toggle, not sure what that's for. Wheel suspension, advanced rotor, I'm not sure what all those are for from a control panel sense, why you'd want to control them from there. Um, okay, so then we have this guy, which we saw before, which is a ramp for, I'm guessing, ground vehicles, jeeps, and whatnot you could build and bring aboard. It's pretty cool, pretty slick. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring that up though, just so we don't have to mess with it. Uh, piston hanger. What's that for? Ah, so you can connect it with, if you had like a ship or something here, you, or a jeep or something here, you could dock it and offload the materials, cool. And then you could turn the connector on, awesome. All right. What else we got in here? That's gonna lead more through the underbelly. This leads up towards the top. Okay, cargo container. I thought there was... Was there nothing up here we can get to? It's up there. Well, I guess we'll figure out how to get there in a minute. What goes down this way? Uh, so we have side doors here that lead to... Oh! Cool. So they use a small ship grid and made kind of like a crew quarters situation. Or captain's quarters? Medical bay here. Let's turn my lights on just in case you guys aren't seeing all this correctly. I really like this stuff. This has become kind of commonplace now that they added the ability to vanilla switch the rotor head size. A lot of people have made use of that and made some really cool stuff out of it. All right, we have, looks like another one of these uh, platforms. And this leads us to the main, I love those spotlights, that's so cool. Um, this leads us to the main, like, 
cockpit bridge area. Ah, okay, so then this leads up top from this direction. Okay, that's kind of cool. So we have a kind of landing flight deck up here. Now this is... This is weird. I don't know how this is happening because... This is half blocks, but the texture color is like... I don't know how this is... I don't know how this was done. <laughs> this is kind of crazy, but it's kind of cool. Um, I don't believe this is a modded build, so I don't see... I don't, I don't remember seeing anything that was a mod listed here. Um, so I don't know how this was done unless it just is done through painting but the texture connects as if it's a, a solid block? I guess that's how it was done. That's so weird. So for any of you that don't quite get it, basically this the, the groove texture is just connected, like once you put all these together it just randomizes this groove texture no, no matter where it is, and then the painting is done in a checker pattern, so that's why it looks like the painting and the groove don't line up. That's what was weird to me. It looks like they painted half the block this way and half the block this way, but that's not actually what's going on. That's super trippy to me. Kind of cool, especially being vanilla, but it's really odd. Alright, sensor detects small ships. So yeah, it's basically like a landing platform, which is cool, and then this leads up to that welder crane. What I can't figure out is how to get to, to um, this up here, like the way you're supposed to get to it. Where is the access point for this? All right, so there's a door over here, and then, oh, there's side doors that I missed. Okay, that's where it is. I was gonna say, I was like, they have catwalks everywhere. I should be able to get to it. I don't know where it is. So yeah, and then this controls, I'm assuming, all the hangar and whatnots from up here. Which is pretty cool. Now, again, let's get to the main event of this build, which is its driving suspension. Sorry, I'm probably making everybody dizzy with my camera work here. I was kind of just trying to get uh, a handle on where I was. Um, but yeah, it has this cool driving suspension type thing. Even there, down, down there, you can see that it has uh, cruise control settings, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're, I guess we're going to be driving through a remote block. I won't pretend to understand exactly how some of these scripts and stuff work when they're uh, maximizing wheel controls, because they there's been a couple of scripts that really have done a lot for driving um, and using rotors and things like that. Um, but all right, so we have cruise. I'm guessing that's cruise control on and cruise control off. Front camera, rear, save. Not sure what that's for. Uh, spotlights, conveyors, nothing really else. But what's what's interesting about this uh, base is its ability to kind of, because it's using a rotor system, the wheels kind of twist and turn and give, and you can even see half of the ship, or half the base, just uh, twisted there, and the other half did not. Um, I normally try and make sure I'm on flat ground so this is kind of one of the few instances where I probably need to find some more hills um, but yeah it's very adaptive from what I understand now the only thing is it did say in the description not to get going too fast and if you do you get a warning um, because it probably can't handle going certain speeds uh, it probably starts to break down but um, Another cool feature of it is if one of the wheels breaks, it shifts the weight to the to uh, the remaining wheels and stuff like that. So it's really, really neat how it's designed to balance everything. Um, I'm trying to find a good example so you guys can see it a little bit better when the, the ship actually contorts and twists. There's another good example of it right there. It kind of shifted back and forth. Um, if you really want to stress test it, though, and see what all it can do, I do recommend you guys download it. It, it. I believe it's a vanilla blueprint, so you should just be able to cut and paste it in and then just kind of drive it around. Um, oh, there's a good one right there. You can see it kind of twist back and forth. Really, really cool stuff. Um, and in the description and on the thumbnails and things, you can actually see it going up over hills and bending and, and some other cool... So it's probably one of the most adaptive 
ground vehicle driving systems I've seen done so far. Uh, which is pretty cool because I've always felt like the beings that it's space engineers, I've always felt like the ground vehicles kind of got a raw deal and they're not really as stable. It's not that they, you can't build them, they're just not as stable as thruster based type things. But this one, this one proves you can do it because it's, it's like ATVing over here in terms of, ooh, can I drive over the tree? No. Uh, in terms of it being adaptive and everything. It's really, really cool. Very, very well done. Uh, oh, here's a decent hill. I'm trying to find one that'll actually make it bend. And it's not really doing it very much. Not really having to, which is good. But anyways, so that's it for this one. Let's move on to the last one. Alright, so last but not least, we have the Ark Cruise Liner. Now, this is a little bit of an interesting ship, but I have to point out a couple things. One, the interior is a little bit empty. Um, it's admitted in the description. It's not really something that's like, you know, not aware of or anything like that. But, um, so the uh, interior might be a little bit on the lacking side. Uh, but it is actually really good for people that want to add on to the ship themselves. Uh, so keep that in mind. It is a modless build, totally vanilla. Um, and I just really liked the design of the ship. It's really, really different. Um, it, I believe, said it's survival ready as far as it has all the base functional stuff, air sealing, uh, assemblers, things like that, I think if I recall correctly. Um, but it's developed as a cruise line ship, a pleasure cruise type thing, so it doesn't have a whole lot of armaments or anything like that. Um, but I like, I, like I said, I really just got hooked on the design. It's just a really interesting looking ship. I thought it was really, really cool. Um, now, it also has a lot of glass, which we all know how much I love about that. Um, now I will say I'll probably be flying a little bit more in this ship than I originally expected, mainly because for whatever reason, at least in this area, we don't have any gravity. And so, um, we're using the mag boots, which, unlike glass, we all know how much I like mag boots. Spoiler alert, it's not much. Um, so yeah, if I start flying around a little bit more, it's probably just because I'm tired of the thing doing this crap, which is just snapping to everything. Um, bridge is pretty cool. It's got a glass floor in this section for, I guess, observational purposes, because there's just passenger seats. There's no, um, you know, no other bridge controls or anything like that. We've got a couple programmable blocks here. We have the main flight seat. Um, it flies like a capital ship. We'll show that off at, uh, towards the end of our walkthrough here. Um, but it flies about like you'd expect from a capital ship. It's kind of kind of on the sluggish, but um, you know it moves. So, but yeah, it's it's predominantly designed to be kind of one <laughs> designed one to, to be one of those uh, like a yacht or a cruise ship kind of thing. So you can see a little bit of the inner workings back there. And there's a lot of glass all over this ship. I really think it's cool. But like I said, the interior isn't really. Um, all that fleshed out to where it's like, um, it's like the opalescence had, uh, from last episode had, um, it had a cool exterior, but then it had like a, a really, uh, detailed interior kind of thing, which made it really, uh, interesting, but it's a smaller ship. This is a, a much larger vessel. And so then it's, a, you know, the, the interior is not as completed. Now, the only thing I don't quite know, this says go to lower decks. I guess we can go this way. I was trying to look for the rest of the access point. Um, I do like the double layered glass. That's pretty cool. But as you can see, there's a lot of room in here. You could add your own uh, rooms and stuff like that if you wanted to, even if you wanted to turn it into your survival series ship or something like that. There's a lot of access to it. Um, not sure where this goes, but it looks kind of cool. Oh, this is a more to the central area. Okay. Or one of the thruster. Not central, it's one of the thruster circles, I, I suppose. Probably for maintenance, because you could get to all this through here and you could repair them if they got damaged. Um, actually, again, you could even add stuff into this area. 
you know, and uh, and do some different things to it as well. So it's definitely definitely a ship that you could use for like a survival playthrough or something if you wanted to go through and add rooms or if you wanted to take um, mods and stuff like that and add mods to it. It's, this would probably be super conducive to, to modding because it would really allow you to do a lot of different stuff. Uh, more core components here in the central area. I'm trying to find... Uh, I guess this is the triangle. I was gonna say I was trying to find the main triangle section and figure out what all was inside this. I think that's what this is. Is the main triangle section of the ship. I do like how everything has windows and glass everywhere though. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but again, I believe that for me anyway, the main attraction to this ship was the the exterior. The exterior of it is just really cool and very unique. I think that's what really drew me to it is it's very different. Um, it's not really like other ships that you're used to seeing. Oops, I opened that in the wrong... oh well. Uh, but yeah, I really do like the... I really do like the design of the ship. I think it's really cool. And it does serve a, a really good, um... It, it, it's definitely a, a good design for something like a yacht, or not even a yacht, but a, like a cruise liner. Um, I think it's very, very well done. Um, so, in terms of flying the ship, this is actually the bridge up here, in case that wasn't already apparent. I just realized there was supposed to be LCD. Oh, it's for lighting. I was going to say there was LCDs on the top. And I guess if you used your jetpack, you could use that as an observation area. Uh, but yeah, this is the bridge up here. And in terms of flying, it accelerates not too bad for a ship that's this big. Uh, but I, obviously, like I'm turning and holding the rotational buttons, and it's it's going, but it's very very slow. So it's definitely not a fighter. But with that, I think we're gonna wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.